Hey y'all, I'm back. Um, haven't made a video in a little while. And uh, of course I'm right here with my, my little co-pilot, Pepper, uh, the money maker, of course. But um, yeah, uh, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of a break from making videos about um, uh, some of the questions my wife had. Um, I do plan on still keeping on doing that because they are fun. Uh, I'm enjoying them a lot. And uh, I might just record another video shortly after this and try and post it tomorrow or something. Um, but yeah, uh, today I just wanted to do something a little different. Um, I don't know what to call it. Uh, it's, it's Again, it's another Apple nerds out on stuff and um, kind of a shower thought thing. Um, something I'm very guilty of, which much to the chagrin of my mom and my wife and other people who wait on me to take a shower because sometimes I take a little longer than I need to and I realize I think part of that is I uh, have my shower thoughts and so yeah um, the topic is um, something that I have thought about I have had to deal with and um, I have struggled with for a long time I mean honestly probably since I was like in middle school um, that's kind of roughly when I think I remember thinking about this question. Um, and it's a question that I think everyone thinks about, uh, inadvertently or not. Um, I, when I bring it up in conversation, people maybe don't know it explicitly as this, but they think about it. It is, I think it's part of human nature that this is something we think about. And it's, um, I've always thought of it as having some sort of an existential crisis. Um, and what the hell is that? What does that mean? Um, some of you probably already know, but the best way I can describe it that I can think of is if you ask the question why enough times, you eventually get to this point. You start to think about things um, that are probably uncomfortable um, and I mean, depending on who you are, depending on your beliefs potentially or um, the way you were brought up, things like that can also affect this. Um, but I think there's always a lingering doubt in the back of your mind of anyone that thinks about this question. So um, what happens when you ask why so many times? Well, eventually you get to some sort of a existential like core so um you're like why do we exist i mean that's where the 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 exist from existential comes from um why are human beings here why is there life why is the universe well, well why is the universe here like and um obviously there are going to be some uh people are going to have their answer to that um and it's always going to be rooted in some kind of a belief. I don't think there's ever going to be a true knowledge. Like I know this, the answer to this question. I think anyone who tries to tell you that is possibly delusional, um, or they're just, they believe it so much that they, that their belief has become what they think is knowledge, which is fine. Uh, I'm not going to, say anyone is right or wrong I, that is not my place um and it's not part of my personality i don't ever really like to say that um i mean if someone believes that two plus two equals five i'm not going to really argue with them it's it's fine um and i'm not trying to associate that believing certain things is like that because it's not it, again this is a question without a definitive in my mind a definitive answer and I think most people would, would probably agree with me there. Um, but it can create some really strong emotions. Um, it can cause stress, anxiety. Um, it has, it, it can, but it can also motivate. It can do some pretty amazing things. Um, this is probably like, I've, I've seen this being an answer to when I see people interview, say, famous scientists or philosophers or writers or artists, like, why do you do what you do? And for a lot of them, they, they're, they're searching for the answer. They're, they're trying to find a reason for their existence or a reason for 
to answer why why are we here why do we do what we do why is um why is anything anything and um so the reason that i think that this can cause some some trouble um and i think it causes trouble for a lot of people is i think the majority of people um, either have or still do struggle with the idea of purpose what is my purpose and i think that is the root of that is why am i here um i we ask that question of ourselves all the time you know um you're going through school and you're struggling and you hate math or you hate history or you hate reading whatever it is and you're like why am i doing this and then you start to ask more why's like well then why do this if i you know what is it going to do for me in the rest of my life and then you be like me and i love physics and i really started to dive into theoretical physics um you know i i remember being a freshman in high school and asking my teacher you know to help explain to me einstein's general relativity and i started you know exploring that topic and seeing how big the universe is I remember reading a book that talked about the death of the universe being, you know, billions, if not trillions of years from now. And um, it makes you start to question. It, it made me go down this philosophical, you know, um, debate in my head. Well, what's the point of life? What is the point of my life if the universe is going to die anyway? What is the point of, of my life if the human race... that I, I don't think any scientist would argue that the human race has some end point. Like there is going to be a point in which the human race can no longer survive. Um, and it's probably because the universe or the galaxy or the solar system is going to do something about it um, or we're going to do it to ourselves. Uh, that's a whole other debate. Um, but again, it's finite. Everything seems so finite. So what's the point? And if you start really dwelling on it a little too much um that's where i've heard it called existential dread um this feeling of helplessness this feeling of hopelessness this feeling of having no purpose in life um and it all stemming from this this idea of like what's the point what's the point if none of it's going to matter a trillion years from now what's the point if my existence isn't going to affect much further beyond maybe, you know, 10 or 20 years after my death and people start to forget about me. And, um, you know, the only memories of me are going to be pictures in a, you know, um, in an ancestry.com or a news clipping or whatever it might be. Um, and it can be a very, very as you can probably guess, very depressing thing. And, you know, not everyone goes down that, but I think everyone has this question and everyone um, tries to, to grasp at some sort of a purpose in life. And I think that's important. Um, I think that um, a lack of purpose, um, not just think, I, I've read and I've seen um, just through my own, like, interest in this kind of topic, that a lack of purpose is a leading cause for things like addiction, um, self-harm, um, depression, anxiety, all of those things. Like not having a purpose can literally ruin someone's life. And um, the reasoning that it drives people to either self-harm or to addiction or a combination of these things is that performing those things allows them to essentially ignore or suppress the the deep down feeling that they you know they can ignore that void inside of them um not having purpose feels like a void um like there's something missing and um it can gnaw at you it can be extremely uncomfortable to think about and it can um you're looking for an escape um and that leads people down that kind of a path so it's an extremely important question and i think it's one that is worth exploring and i'm not going to say that what works for me or what has worked for me is going to work for anyone else um, humans are very complex my brain is going to be nothing like the brain of anyone else in this entire world 
So um, we all have our own experiences, we all have our own upbringing, and we all have our own genetic makeup. So it's fine. Um, and I think it's just good to share. And I think it can help other people maybe develop their own um, perspective in being able to deal with this question and maybe bring a little bit more into your life um, and maybe a little entertainment. I mean, this might be fun to listen to somebody talk about how they deal with existential crisis. And I don't know why I'm having such trouble pronouncing that word right now, but I'll work on it. So anyway, um, the best way that I have found to deal with it is um, I like to think of it as you have to shrink down your um, shrink down the universe and compartmentalize it. Um, it doesn't mean that you ignore bits and pieces of the universe, but you have to recognize the connection that all of these little bits and pieces that make up the universe have with one another and um, being able to focus on one of those so that you can actually live your life and live it with some kind of a purpose. So you have, and, and, and what made me come to this thought was a science thing. I watched a video that talked about the universe and we have what's known as the observable universe. And the observable universe is everything in the universe that has um, emitted light, radiation, whatever, and it has reached us here at Earth. And um, it's kind of this like sphere around Earth, which is funny. That means Earth is technically the center of the visible universe. Um, I know that, you know, we don't like to, we're no longer like the old Greeks that, you know, thought that earth was the center of the universe anymore um or old old style christian christianity or any other religion that was like no earth is the center of the universe and everything circles around us but in this context we are the center of the universe because um we're looking at a sphere of light that has reached us here at earth um what's funny about that is that there is more universe beyond that we just haven't seen it it hasn't happened um and that made me start thinking about how I can shift my perspective. Um, and um, I think that's an important thing. So you have the observable universe, but then there's also what they call the influenceable universe. What that means is there's only so much of the universe that we can actually exert any kind of influence on. So influence is like being able to shoot a laser beam, um, you know, from point A to point B and communicate, say, hey, travel here or hey, do this or do that. Um, and um, that influence, just like everything in the universe, can only travel at the speed of light. So... Um, the thing with the universe is that it is expanding. So the things that we see on the edge of our observable universe, we're never going to be able to actually influence. Because if we shine a light, we shoot a laser beam, whatever, and try and say something to something out there, it is actually going to move outside of our observable universe by the time that light approaches there. And then our light could just will never be able to reach that point. So that made me start thinking on a more personal level. Um, you have to realize that every person, every, me, I am my own universe. I can only exert influence in a certain way. The, my big bang was me being born and my atrophy or not atrophy, but, um, and, um, I can't think of the physics term. I'm sure I'll remember it at the end of the video, but the end of my universe is when I pass away. And that's all that matters. Th that universe, it's not that all that matters, but it is the most important thing. It's if there's anything you have the most influence on, 
it's your own universe and um to ignore your own personal universe because other in universes around you you can't influence because you can't do anything about it um is instead of you have basically given up the only power you have which is to influence your own universe because you're mad you're angry you're um, upset you're depressed that you can't influence other universes now you can you can influence other universes and there is a certain level of influence that you have um, best example would be you can have influence on your family um, if you're a parent you have a great deal of influence on um, your child's upbringing and that's you influencing somebody else's universe and um, the same goes with a spouse or a brother or a sister or a mom or a dad and it, it spreads out like the further away the less influence you're going to have so yeah you can have an influence on a community you can be a community partner or whatever uh, i mean look at me right now on youtube i'm having an influence on anyone who happens to watch this video which is super cool um and and so on and and but you know the further away you get the less influence you have you should absolutely go out and vote but when if you're in a big country like i am here in the united states you have your one vote is versus millions of votes i'm not saying you shouldn't vote but your influence is not as substantial as say being a family being you and just your spouse or something having to decide on what to have for dinner because now it's a two people are voting and then they're coming to a compromise and saying okay let's have that for dinner tonight um that's what's important you should absolutely put the majority of your focus on the things that you have the most influence on which is funny so i'm 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 not religious any longer i i dabbled um because i was very curious i was I mean, if you think I'm curious, I am insanely curious. And I was so curious about religion that I tried following one for a while. But one of the, the, the there was a proverb and I, I can't remember. It was like a prayer proverb, whatever you want to call it. But the gist of it was that, you know, um, you control what you can control. Um, you accept the things that you can't control. And, you know, you try to find peace um, with that fact and you just have peace with it and you ha you hope for the best and prepare for the worst and that's a completely different proverb but that's kind of a, the theory around this you should um focus on the things that you have influence on so instead of focusing on a black hole that is hundreds of millions of light years away that will n that will never have an impact on my life within my lifetime why should i let it indirectly have an influence on me by depressing me and letting me not be able to live my life any longer because what's the point right so when you can miniaturize your personal universe you take it from that universal scale of a big bang out here to you know big bang end of the universe yeah nothing matters in that in that grand scheme of things but who cares about the grand scheme of things you're this little tiny speck in the middle of it and you're not you're not going to be able to change that fact but what you can change is what happens in that little speck that little speck is the one thing you can change it's the one thing you can do something about and that's important you should consider your own personal universe bigger than the grand scheme universe because it's you can you can change it you can control it um and as soon as you can recognize that it, it'll it can really get your juices going i guess i could say and i think it's important to always recognize that.
and it'll help you. It, it helps me deal with things like when the world throws something at me that I have no control over, whether that's a politician changing a law or my taxes going up or down or the price of gas at the pump or the price of food at the grocery store or any of these things or the military telling me I have to go do this or I have to go do that. Um, yeah, it, it sucks. It's like you want to fight you want and you should, I, there are certain points where you should fight, but you shouldn't sacrifice your own personal universe for something that, you have very little control over when you have control over your own personal universe. And now how, how can that bring about finding some kind of purpose? Um, I think a key thing is giving yourself time to be bored. Um, is the best way I can think of it. Um, these big questions, these thoughts. And, um, I, I watched a video and it made total sense. So people sometimes have some really profound thoughts. They have some really aha moments in the shower and the shower is one of those few places still <laughs> existing today that is not influenced by technology. Um, granted you could of course take your Bluetooth speaker in there and, and jam out while you're taking a shower or whatever, but you need to give yourself an opportunity to do nothing. Um, I think it's extremely important. I think I had some of my biggest aha moments in my own head. Um, when I was going through army basic training, it was one of the most boring things I've ever done. It was like a combination of the most thrilling and then also the most boring thing I've ever done. Cause you will go crazy one day, like doing all sorts of drills and doing all kinds of training and you are absolutely exhausted. And then the next day you go to the range and you're sitting around with nothing, nothing but you, your buds, and that's it. Waiting around for hours for other people to go shoot at the range or something. And it can be mind numbingly boring, but, um, and, and it's funny that, you know, one of the things, and I, I, I really appreciate this, the drill sergeants sometimes wouldn't let us sleep. Like you get so bored. You just want to just take a nap because well, one, we were also exhausted, but when you're forced, when you force yourself to be in that uncomfortable, bored situation, you can sometimes have some of the more profound thoughts about your life. Um, you're no longer getting distracted by what society is telling you all around you. You can, you can find potentially some of your most genuine personal thoughts. And for me, um, going through that and going through some things recently and, and just trying to listen to that inner, that, that true inner dialogue, not the one that's being created by society, not the one being created by your friends or your family or whatever. Um, you know, the people who are in, trying to influence you just like how you're trying to influence others. When you can push all that away and you're only listening to your own personal universe. Um, I came to some conclusions like, um, I find a lot of purpose in, um, taking care of my family. Um, and only influencing their universe in a way that is supportive and is pushing them along the path that they truly humbly want to be on rather than trying to push them on a path that I want them on. Um, and that when I, when I finally kind of felt that for the first time, um, my life was suddenly flooded with a feeling of meaning. And I think that's, that's one of those aha moments that you might have. And I, I have a feeling I'm going to have a lot more of them. Um, I definitely get that aha moment when I am learning something, when I am thinking about things like this, making videos about this gives me that little tingle inside. That's like, 
yeah, this is this is giving me some meaning in my life. This is fulfilling a, some sort of a purpose in my life that I really like. And I don't care if this YouTube video a trillion years from now is not going to exist any longer. It doesn't matter. Um, one thing I remember studying was, um, I believe it were Buddhist monks. Um, one of the things, or, or no, 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 not Buddhist. Um, it's like an India, Indian, like chakra type of thing. And, um, it's, it's, a lot of Asian cultures do this. Um, and I, I can't, I can't pin down exactly who it was. It was either India or it was Japan or something like that. But um, they use things called sand tables. Um, and you've probably seen these where it's like a, a flat piece of sand and you have different tools like like rakes and um, other things like that. And you can make really intricate designs on it. Or you can, um, if you've ever been a, you know, a kid down at the beach or something and you make sand castles, it's the same idea. But you're they're doing it to do it. So um, what I mean by that is that they would purposely spend eight hours a day, you know, weeks on time making some of the most intricate, amazing designs. And then they don't take any pictures. They don't do anything with it, but essentially destroy it. And destroy it is a, is a strong word they flatten it back out again. They, they create a blank canvas. It's kind of like if you asked, um, Monet, Manet, whoever Van Gogh to paint the Mona Lisa and then throw bleach on the canvas afterwards and just, just, just erase it and never take a picture of it, never document any of it. You have in a sense, created and ended a universe that only you got to enjoy. And I think it's important that you should view your own life like that. And a way that you can shrink your universe down even further than just it being your birth and your death and everything in between is every day can be a considered a universe. You know, when you wake up, that's the start of, of today's universe. And when you go to sleep tonight, that's the end of today's universe. Yes, it's influenced by everything that happened before it. And yes, you should still think about the consequences of what you do today affecting future days. But if you can just do that, you can become more present in your conversations. You can, um, instead of regretting something you did in the past, and instead of dwelling on um, the what ifs that you that we all do, and we all do it. We all do the well. What if I, you know, what if I go to this thing I don't really want to go to, and it ends up being a disaster, and then I'm humiliated for the rest of my life with these this group of friends or whatever. You know, we do these what ifs. They're stupid, but we do them, and it's a defense mechanism to protect us from uncomfortable. Uh, stressful in, in situations and it's important but it can become overwhelming and it can control us to the point where um, you will regret not doing things or you'll regret you know you can you see where I'm going with this but when you're in the moment when you're not thinking about the past and you're not thinking about the future and you're just thinking about your tiny little universe that that singular day that singular hour that singular minute and you're like you know what nothing else matters except this next hour i'm going to spend with my loved one i'm going to listen to everything they have to say i'm going to listen with an intent to understand i'm going to have a a nice, maybe profound conversation, um, or just a nice loving conversation with this person and boom, that's it. And you can look at that, that little snippet, that little universe that you just created there and be like, that was a good universe. And you can be proud of that and you can feel meaning, meaning from having created this little tiny bit of universe this little this little chunk of space time itself that you're like
boom, I, I grabbed that. I made it exactly how I would like it, or it is so good. I'm going to cherish that. And it doesn't matter that, you know, that your partner might not remember it, you know, a year from now or whatever, you got to experience it and you controlled it, you made it and that was yours. Um, yeah, I, I think that is how I've begun dealing with all of this and it has helped tremendously with, um, being able to handle situations better. Um, no one's perfect. I still struggle with it. I, absolutely can still get sucked up into like letting the world beat me down to where it makes me makes it near impossible for me to be present and this little shower thought if you want to call it that this little epiphany where i thought about the size of my universes and compartmentalizing it um i think has really helped me a lot um it has allowed me to um, create a new perspective on things. Um, this morning, I took a, about a half hour, hour to um, clean my dad's truck. I'm still going to just call it my dad's truck. It's my truck right now, but, you know, I inherited it. But it's going to always be my dad's truck. And I put my phone away, never took it out. I didn't listen to music. All I did is take a bucket, my sponge, and my washcloths, uh, or my chamois, or you know whatever my um, I can't even think of the name of the towels that you use on cars now, but um, yeah, uh, and just spent an hour to myself doing it. I was proud of it, you know. I took pictures and sent it to my mom, and my wife, because I was just proud of my work. But ultimately, I did that for myself. I did that because that gave that was an hour I gave myself a little a little one hour universe that I made for myself that was peaceful that was fulfilling that and it doesn't matter that yes a week from now my car is going to be covered in the Las Vegas dust again it doesn't matter that that isn't the, the point of doing it um, and I think we need to to try and normalize that i think i think we have been conditioned to say everything you do has to be productive in a way that will either earn you money or earn you fame or earn you success or earn you something um and we aren't earning mental capital we're not earning you know a healthy capital um you know, uh, we're working out to get buff and to look good on camera, um, instead of just working out to just work out or to just maybe be healthy. Um, and we're, we're saying, oh, we're going to be healthy so that we can live a long life. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but a long life for, for what? Maybe you should just be healthy because that feels good. It, that one hour of feeling healthy just feels good you're not doing it for anyone else. You're not doing it for some grand scheme of extending your life. You're not doing it for, um, the doctor. You're not doing it for even your family. You're doing it for yourself because it just feels good to be healthy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's just the perspective that I have decided I want to take in life that is going to um, at least provide me a foundation to being the best person I can possibly be and to live a life with meaning and purpose. And, um, you know, and yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't know how to finish this. Um, I think I've, uh, I've, I've spoken quite at length it's yeah, uh, definitely. It's been a long video. If you've made it this far, <laughs> thank you. Um, I hope you find it interesting and, um, I, you know, and if it, if it influences you in any way, if it gives you a different perspective on life, I'm makes me that feels great. If it doesn't, if this video literally is seen by nobody, um, I'm going to follow my own advice. It doesn't matter. 
Uh, this has put a smile on my face. It has filled me with a sense of meaning and purpose. And um, I encourage everyone out there, try and find that purpose. Let yourself be bored. Go take a hike with nothing. Try to force yourself to keep that phone on off or vibrate or whatever and only have it for emergencies and go do something that doesn't involve other people that doesn't involve our media or society or anything and it's just you by yourself and maybe some nature and let your thoughts just run just run through your thoughts run and run and run and run through your thoughts and look for the genuine pieces find the things that sound like they are actually you and they aren't your parents telling you to do something and they aren't your friends telling you to do something and they aren't the news or the society or social media saying you have to do this to be successful or this is how you should be purposeful in life. Look for the genuine you in those thoughts. And I promise you, I, it, it will make you at least feel a little bit better about the world and about the universe. And, uh, yeah. Whew. Um, if I might revisit this, I mean, this is a huge topic, obviously, you know, existential crises and dread and these things are a huge topic. Um, and like I said, I've, you know, I've really, really enjoyed, you know, letting my mind go down that rabbit hole. But um, I've also felt that that rabbit hole has, I remember when I was younger, it consumed me sometimes and it made me really depressed thinking about these things because um, it can, it can drag you down into a feeling of like, well, what's, what's the point of it all? And I, this change your perspective um, I think that can really, really benefit anyone and everyone. Change your perspective. Think about things from a different perspective. Um, make things smaller or make them bigger. You know, don't limit yourself to just one train of thought. Um, and um, I promise you, it'll make things feel better. So anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I, it looks like I made pepper over there um nice and tired listening to my voice um but yeah if you have any questions leave some comments if you like the video you know give me a thumbs up i would really appreciate that um and uh yeah and i'll try and do another video um uh here either today or tomorrow um and it's going to be more of a fun one i'm going to do something um probably one of the questions that my wife likes to ask and uh um Let's see if I can do that either today or tomorrow. Um, after um, tomorrow, I will actually be flying out to Tennessee. So um, I won't be doing any videos for probably the weekend. Um, we'll see when I get back if I decide to do something like on Monday or Tuesday. Um, I am also streaming. Um, if you want to keep an eye out for that, you can watch my streams. Right now, I'm just streaming um, Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's been a lot of fun. It's one of the, and to be honest, the reason I'm streaming um, is um, it's a nice way for me to connect with my wife. Um, um, neither of us are like huge fans of like FaceTiming. Um, it's more fun for us to watch each other do things that we enjoy doing. And um, she likes to sit on the couch and crochet while she uh, watches me play Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, has uh, she she loves the fact that you know um i could potentially be a pilot in the future and i would like to pursue that and i'm gonna work on that so um yeah um keep an eye out for those streams i did a couple recently um if you want to try and look for those videos on my channel so um but other than that y'all uh, i'm gonna call it here uh, i think yeah i have gone way over my limit um apologize for the 40 minute video of me talking um but again if you enjoyed it give me that thumbs up and uh i'll see you guys on the next one bye